Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to the Board of Selectmen's meeting Monday, January 25th. <laughs> Uh, and I'd like to start off, Chief, will you start off with the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Could we have a moment of silence? Thank you. Uh, do we have any public comment tonight? No public comment. Approval of the uh, minutes from Monday, July 11th, 2016, regular executive session. I need a motion. So moved. So moved. Uh, all those in favor, John. Yes. 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 Mr. Chairman, I was wondering if we might take out of order approval of the one day liquor license for um, Matthew Walker and Arc Rod and Gun Club. I have no problem whatsoever. See? I see. So the date of the February 20th, one day license. To make a motion we approve of one day license for February 20th, 2016, Matthew Walker and Arc Rod and Gun Club. Second. Second. Yep. <laughs> I guess we can make that a four. All those in favor, join. Yes. 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 Thanks, see. Thank you. Sam, I swear you wait out that door until 6.30 you walk through the door. Uh, I have approval request, a public hearing, approval to request uh, New Seabury Properties LLC to temporarily close the country club for deep cleaning and maintenance. Is there anyone here from New Seabury representing? Okay. Um, do you want to step up to here in case there's anyone? Has anyone got any questions on this? I, I do have one. Uh, it says in the letter, you're closing on January 2nd through the 25th of March? Yes. You close now? Yes. We have uh, a list of some dates that uh, we'd like to be open for. Um, My only issue with this, I don't have a problem with you closing. Is to get a, a letter January 7th saying you're closing January 2nd, and then that requires the you know, compliance with your license, requires our approval maybe next year. We could get it on December 7th so that we could approve it prior to your closing. Sure. Thank you. Have we got a list of the uh, uh, days that you wanted to open in this? They're in the letter. In yes, the letter. Okay. there is. They're all listed in there. Okay. I make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Do I have a motion to uh, approve the motion? I make a motion that we uh, authorize the closing of the restaurant. Um, from January 2nd to March 25th, the snack bar January 4th to March 25th, uh, with the exception of the dates that are listed in the letter to be open for a handful of individual days. Second. I'll second that. Any uh, questions? All those in favor? Yes. 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 A second is approval for request to New Seabury Properties LLC to temporarily close the prop and that's an in for deep cleaning. I make a motion we close the public hearing. I'll second that. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Make a motion to close this. Pop an asset. You have the uh, letters there, open days. They have January 1st through March 31st. <coughs> January 1st. January 1st through March 31st for the deep cleaning. Is there any uh, days of their opening? No. no? Okay. The only one was. Do I have a second? 16. Second. All those in favor? Yes. 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 
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Catherine Laurent, is she here? She is not here. I told her to go home. Okay. Are you a long gonna, weekend. Yes, are you did. going to uh, uh, as far, explain these? Yeah, as far as the uh, fee increase that she's recommending, uh, that's all outlined in her memorandum. If anybody has any questions, uh, I can try to answer them. But I think it's self-explanatory in the memo. And then the uh, second item that she had was the uh, grant that she was seeking. I do have a question on the grant, Rodney. Mm -hmm. um, are we going to uh, have to do a design plan anyway for the for the building for the like the windows that they're asking? Because if if we if it's in CIP, I notice that we can just. Put the windows in, but if we're going through the process to get this grant, mm -hmm. we we are obligated to pay for a design fee. Well, as you could see in the emails, I specifically stated that if there were any matching funds that were required, or if there were any upfront costs, um, I didn't want to obligate ourselves to this okay. at this juncture. Mm -hmm. But my understanding is from what I was told, that even if we did seek this, um, it could subsequently be rejected unless the terms and conditions were satisfactory to us. Okay. I, I have a question on each of the items. The first one on the uh, recycling, the cost of uh, electronics devices. Do okay. you know if that, what our cost is to get rid of these devices? Is there, is there any margin in this or is it this exactly what it costs to dispose of these items that i'd have to follow up with you on i know that we we're we had fallen behind and i think we we're paying um more to dispose of some of the electronic items this is, i think this, I think this is i think this is what the recommendation is attempting to address right. to bring this to, but at cost again or is it i always felt that we should be allowed to make a uh you, it, to keep to use the to pay for the device to get rid of at the transfer station, um, I don't believe you have to have a sticker. You have to go in and you would have to pay to get rid of the device, but I don't think that that helps to offset the operational cost of the transfer station. And I always felt that we should at least be able to make a dollar or, or something on the operational cost of the transfer station. Well, you're gonna be coming out with the report for the transfer station? Right. So do you want me to incorporate the answers to your questions into that? So that we, we can, we can that. address it at the next board I meeting. Just, yeah, I was just hoping that she would have had something on that, but she doesn't. That's, and that's fine. We and can, I'll get the margin. Okay. We, I mean, it also might make sense. If you don't have a sticker, we shouldn't take it. Well, you're a resident, you know, so I mean, you could, all you have to do is prove residency <coughs> even on, okay, even on so recycling. recycling. But, not for, but not for out of town. No, not no. for out of town. Well, they, yeah, they actually would take her for a while. I heard they could even yeah. take um, on non-residents for recycling. Um, no, no stick. I think I'd like to read these two for anyone listening. They have no idea what kind of prices okay. we're talking okay. about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Electronics, uh, monitors and televisions. Our electronics, five dollars is current. We're proposed ten. Monitors and televisions, twenty inches, five dollars will now be ten. Twenty to thirty-five inch will now is ten dollars. Will now be twenty-five dollars. 36-inch console is now $20, and it looks like we're not going to take them anymore. 36 to 50-inch is $35, and a 51-inch or better console is $50. She does explain in the memo, yeah. as I'm sure you've read, that unfortunately the cost of the town over the last few months has increased threefold. Okay, so we just defer this. Mm -hmm. You want to just defer this until you guys? Yeah, I don't. Is it? there any harm in, in just deferring this? Uh, I don't believe there is. I think uh, what I would suggest is maybe table it to the next meeting, and then what we, we could do, do, do all is uh, address the transfer station all at once. Okay. Okay. I, I, that's, I think that's fair. Um, on the second issue, the windows in the school. Now, as a contractor, this is this is how it goes. If you have a if you have a home, what you do is you invite your suppliers in, and you invite them to do give you a price on the materials. Mm -hmm. And windows, they come in and they do that survey for at no cost, in hopes of getting that job. 
why do we have to pay for a survey on the windows? It's a legitimate question. Uh, I'll attempt to answer. Because um, under the public bid law, you have to put out a set of specs and have people bid. But the, they would be provided by the... Um, by us. We'd have to provide We'd have specs. to provide them? Yeah. Yeah. So you could, you know, you have to, you have to have put out an RFP and, and, and invite bids without, you know, you can, you can have contractors come in and give you advice about what the RFP ought to look like, what the elements of it are, as long as... I'm talking as suppliers, not contractors. So you, the, you, a supplier will come in and do a takeoff on your house, right. measure every window, and tell you exactly what the specifications are on those windows at no cost. Right. And they will tell you how do they need to be installed with the instructions. Right. But we would have to, in order to bid the job, we would have to have those specs, regardless of how we get them. You could rely on, you could rely on some, a supplier coming in and saying this is what it would take, but they'd still have to bid the job in a, you know, in a competitive sealed bid environment. So you have to come up with, we as the proposing community have to come up with a set of design specs the required that specs. contractors and suppliers can bid on. And what will end up happening is, you know, the, the general contractor will get a price from a supplier and do a sealed bid. It'll be combined. So you won't, you know, you won't know it until after you open it. What I was just trying to look at is to avoid the cost of the, the survey and the property right. because it's a substantial building and it's going to cost the town some money. It, it if is. they charge me a money. $100 a window, I mean, it adds up pretty quick. And I don't know <coughs> what they're going to charge. I kind of get the impression that's what she's trying to avoid with this grant. Well, what she's, what she's doing is she's applying for school building authority money, mm -hmm. and school building authority will give you... Um, they'll reimburse you. For they'll that. reimburse you a percentage. Mm -hmm. of the job and the cost associated with like you know 38 the time they did around was 38 percent so it's still you know the whole job's going to be expensive um but you know they require as part of their process the same specs that would have to go out for a public bid so i don't think we're wasting money if we're going to proceed with the project well i'm just saying you could get it for nothing you can't get it for you can't quite get it for nothing right Right. You'd, 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 you'd be somewhat obligated to somebody who did, but... Well, you're not yeah. obligated to them at all. They'd be doing it at risk. So I, I guess... Well, there the, you go. The, the room you have in the procurement law is that potential bidders can participate in the development of the, of the scope of the work as long as the piece they're adding to it is not proprietary. So in other words, you can't work with, let's say you did an IT contract, and somebody helped said, somebody came in and said, <coughs> the solution to your problem is this. And they're the only ones who sell that. Mm -hmm. right. And then you turn around and put on an RFP that says, I want this. And then that guy is basically, you know, sole sourced right. himself a job. Windows are windows with some, some degree of variability. Right. So a window supplier could come in if they were so inclined and they thought they could really beat the market and do the measurements and say, this is what you need. Here are all the measurements. Here are the number of windows, the whole bit. We'd then turn around and put that in an RFP and they'd have to have the lowest bid. And they would probably need to hire an engineer to stamp the stamp the plans. Well, they come with the you know windows of windows. I mean, they, they don't need truly to be engineered, but most of them come engineered. They have their specs when they're manufactured. Right, but in order to qualify, I got you sure you qualify for the money. They're going to want to know that somebody, that an engineer, looked at the specs and says these yeah, are right. Well, for this well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. They're engineered windows. Nobody just built right. them in their backyard. And under, the, right. under this program, it's eligible. For the repair and it is and, and so we it is my question was since this went in years ago mm -hmm. two years ago two three Three's, cycle yes. we didn't get funded no. have they looked has Catherine of the schools looked at why our project didn't get enough points to get on the funding list and address that those deficiencies in this application it essentially came down to a number of projects and pressing needs uh, my understanding is there were 200 to 300 applications the accelerated repair program is not always funded. That targets roofs, HVAC, and windows. So that's why this was not in there, because it's windows. Okay. There's a difference from what I was explaining. They have different slots. Yes. Priorities. And this in the accelerated program did not get funded right. the last time we applied. Is it going to get funded this time? Do they know? I mean, I guess if it... I'd like to do a little bit of intelligence gathering to see whether there's money in this pot this time and what the authorities thinks they're going to get for demand. They know. Um, 
So they, you know, so they might have a sense. I mean, we're going to do the project gonna, anyway. We know we're going to get, get you know, right. a bunch of you know, heating and roof projects that are like critical to keeping a bunch of schools functioning, and they know, have some sense because they've talked to these. They they talk to the towns. So if they if somebody there would talk to us and say, you know, we get ten million bucks and we have a fifteen million dollar critical list, your windows aren't going to cut it, then. Yeah, maybe we go down a different road. I don't see do. by uh, okaying this that we that potential hurt anyone, and this is a deadline in the middle right. of 12, February 12th, so we'd have to do it. Tomorrow. No, why don't we go ahead and do it? But but I'd ask. I you know, understand the schools need mm -hmm. the windows. Oh, right. Yeah. I don't and, just. And what I was gonna. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? second. Any more conversation? No. No. Nope. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Can you ask Catherine if she doesn't have somebody there that she works with to talk to me? Thank you. Laura, are you ready to uh, speak to us? Haven't seen you in a while. Hmm? Maybe March of last year? Yes. Hey, it's You're early this year. <laughs> Hi. Laura, I'm before a, you get started, I have one question. Did, uh, did you ever get in touch with the Water District? Yes. Because they're the ones that have been handling it for the town, not us. Yeah, but you're two separate identities. But, but mm, by the, well, my personal goal is to the go. The Water District has taken the lead in it because they have most of the lead. lead I want you to know this in case you don't know it. The water district has already put on the table with uh, Eversource that they would pay the difference between whatever chemical treatments they want to do and clear cutting it. Now I haven't heard any, I haven't heard a resolve one way or the other, but I know they've been in uh, contact and negotiations with them for quite a while. And we are not trivia, as you said, it's a different. Eversource told them to go pound sand. Did they? Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's last year's news. Um, <clears throat> and the state regulation, it, it's a law that ever sources to maintain vegetation underneath the power lines. To have us go out and hand prune, it's illegal, unless we own that land. So there is a fine line to cross before we can even have that discussion. Um, Eversource, I, I have talked to the Water District, and they have not returned. Uh, right, the, the reason I say so. that is that's why we haven't become <laughs> real vocal, because we have been aware that they've been negotiating with them, and I know the town isn't going to offer much more than paying for it. Which is commendable, and I want to thank you for that. You were the first town to step up to say that you would do that, and that's uh, beautiful. Um, my goal is to go to all the boards of selectmen and have a collective countywide effort yet again. I want to thank you for uh, signing and uh, writing against the YOP 2015 as of uh, last year. Uh, you are part of all 15 Cape Cod towns not wanting this to happen in their town. I'm going back again asking the same thing. That's my second request. The difference being the YOP is not out yet this year. So we wait for the comment period. It'll be about 30 days. Then please read it and write against using herbicidal applications along power lines in your town-owned and privately-owned land on your power lines in your town. So that's request number two. So no reason to write or vote on that at this point. Just know it's going to come up, and I will get in touch with you when that time comes. You'll probably get the paperwork before I even know. So, Request number one I have for the board tonight is to write a letter in support of Dan Wolf's bill, S, that's Senate 478, which states that the towns get to choose what type of vegetation management plan they want and Eversource would have to abide. So it's just a support letter, a quick paragraph. I have a support letter if you want a draft or you can write your own. I believe in um, your notes you've got the actual bill, um, which is only a page and a half long. My third request is a little bit bigger than writing a couple of documents. Could we have, your, uh, could we have a copy of Absolutely. 
The reason why it's not in your packet is because uh, it was submitted after the packets went out. That's why it's not there. Yes, I apologize. I thought it was part of your packet. So we have it now. Thank you. If you take that in consideration. Do you want to read this and we'll uh, vote to uh, support it? I can read it, sure. I'm going to have. You want to read it? Okay. No, okay. Dear ENRA Committee Chair Senator Gobi and Representative Schmidt, we are undersigned the list your town, Mashby, Board of Selectmen, right to respectfully ask that the ENRA Committee move forward and favorably report out Dan Senator Dan Wolf's bill S-478, a bill regarding vegetation management in the rights of way. The intent of this bill is to give individual towns such a Mashby the right to negotiate a no pesticide spraying agreement with Eversource Energy Corp. Therefore, providing the citizens of Mashby an alternative method of maintaining rights of way without the use of toxic pesticides. Inasmuch as no additional cost would ensure to Eversource from the passage of this bill and the citizens of Mashby so strongly support the mandating of alternatives to spraying of toxins, we call upon you to move this ma matter forward respectfully. The Board of Selectmen. I'd like a motion to support this Make letter. Motion we support the I'll second that motion. Uh, any conversation? Mm -hmm. All those easy. in favor? Yes. 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 That was the hearing date yet? You know? That would be in July. Mr. Chair, mm -hmm. I'll have that prepared on stationery for the board to sign. Okay. Great. That was easy, wasn't it? Yes, you were the 12th town to say yes to that. Thank you very much for supporting well, that. Uh, my third request is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't push it. <laughs> I had three requests for this evening. So, first two, a little paperwork. Um, this is asking the Board of Selectmen to allow your town council a conversation with a lawyer, uh, Bruce Taub out of Orleans, who has taken Eversource to court on October 1st and won. I would much rather you go through the town manager and uh, town council. We don't want to make decisions for our town council. Correct. So this is be all right with you. That's fine. Just asking the board for permission. That's all that You're is. You're not going to get until he comes back to us and says it's okay. Okay. Every town's different. So um, what's what the I can procedure? tell you is uh, town council's coming in for regular hours. I believe it's either this Friday or next Friday. So if you contact my office tomorrow, um, we'll have a discussion and then. I will have a discussion with him subsequent to your discussion, and then Great. I'll report back to the board. Wonderful. Thank you very much. I appreciate all your help on this matter. It's unfortunate that we're back at this stage again, uh, but, but con considering we have one in court, we believe that is going to be the way to stop them. So we're really hopeful all towns get involved. Well, we, we've always, we always have been. And you have been it. wonderful in this. Yes, again, I'm Laura Kelly, director of PocaCapeCod.org. Thank you very much, and Happy New Year, you Thank guys. Thank you for all the good work. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Michael, I understand you're giving us an update on Mashby Cares. It's good to see you again. Two things tonight, hopefully. One, uh, Gail uh, was working, we work with the governor's opiate uh, state without stigma program, and we're trying to get everybody to support the fact that people, there is a stigma associated with it. We want to treat people with respect. So, Gail, you want to talk with, about that for a second? Well, in front of you, we have the um, state without stigma proclamation. And uh, we were asking that the board support um, this proclamation, which really talks about um, the fact that if people are suffering from addiction that people really look at them as as a disease and that there is treatment for addiction and um, 
you are not alone. If you know someone or a family member or you yourself are struggling with addiction, you just, uh, there is help out there and it's just a phone call or just tell someone until someone listens. And um, in supporting this um, proclamation, we are saying that every life is valued and everyone uh, deserves a chance to have a fulfilling life and um, that this is a disease and there is treatment. Do I have a motion in making the pledge? I make the motion. Do you yes. want to read the pledge? Yes, I will. We, the Board of Selectmen for the Town of Mashpee, support st state without stigma. We understand that addiction is not a choice, it's a disease. We pledge to join the movement against stigma by embracing those in need, showing compassion in how we think about, talk about, and treat people who struggle with addiction, empowering them to seek treatment and a successful recovery. Any conversation? No. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, as far as Mashpee Cares, real quick. This, this began back in 2010, believe it or not. Uh, then a, a meeting led by Ad Bradshaw with about 50 people at the high school to talk about a bunch of issues. The goal at the time was considered and titled uh, the well-being, health and well-being of Mashpee youth. Uh, 2010. We're talking three or four years ago, so it's taken a long time. Uh, as you all know, at the time we talked about uh, bullying, drug abuse, gang activity, coping skills, and a bunch of things that, that the kids were all going through that the schools recognized at the time. We garnered a lot of energy and we started moving forward and we realized at the time that, that focusing on too many different things was difficult. As a result of that, we kind of lost a little bit of energy. We did surveys with the schools. We did, uh, we talked to a bunch of people. We talked about, we did focus groups. We gathered a lot of information and we ended up going, focusing on the drugs and alcohol issue, which I think was supported by a bunch of other people. As you know, over the course of these years, we've changed superintendents, we've changed town managers, we've changed members of the committee. And as a result of that, we spun our wheels to some degree. Uh, we've got a new committee together now. Uh, we're partnering with the Barnstable County Substance Abuse Council, which is a group uh, in Barnstable that recognized that towns on their own individually were having difficulty in finding a solution to the problem. Uh, all you have to do is look at the newspaper, uh, talk to high school people, uh, talk to other friends of yours, go on Facebook, and you realize this thing is, is really <coughs> a, a very difficult situation to, to, to gather people around and support. So what we did is we went to the Barnstable and Gail replaced me on the Barnstable County Substance Abuse Council. They have created training for towns such as Mastery uh, to help them sort of put the coalition, if that's the right terminology, together. Uh, what happens is we go to a meeting and we talk about the seniors because we had senior center participation. We talk about enforcement. We had police and fire support. We talk about uh, homelessness. We had Gail from Human Services. We talked about the schools having problems in the school. We could never quite gather around one area to start focusing on so that we could make an impact and then spread out. So these folks came in two meetings ago. And I'll, bring you, I'll send you folks meeting reports so that you can have the data. And they talked about prevention, recovery, treatment, and everything. And we came to the conclusion, as I think many uh, lay people do, that uh, prevention may be the best thing we can focus on. We're not doctors. We're not counselors. We can't really do the recovery piece. We're not all policemen. And so we can't do much about uh, that type of thing. So we focused on prevention, and we outlined prevention through education, good opportunity with the schools. Uh, prevention through uh, communication, which is an opportunity through the newspapers and through the Board of Selectmen so you can either support or give us direction in the direction you want to go to. And we talked about the, the, the town through the Mastery Chamber of Commerce getting people and commercial entities behind uh, working together on this whole thing. So what we're doing now uh, is we, sub, we put into four subcommittees, a structure committee, uh, a Sigma committee that Gail is working on, a membership committee that talks about trying to get various pieces of the town to participate in this, this goal of ours. Um, and we're beginning to put this into some kind of paper. February 23rd, Barnstable County is coming into the Mastery Library from 1230 to 5 
to train Mashpee and two other towns, two or three other towns, small towns, in developing this coalition in the use of prevention to try to actually make some impact. It's kind of a, it's frustrating for me to stand here and say we've been four years looking at this thing and we haven't really done much about it except talk. So uh, that's kind of where we are. We've partnered with the county. This is a group of people that have um, 15 or so towns on the Cape together. There's a, there's a group of people that can gather some funds. We're working with the governor, as you saw Baker with the Sigma thing to try to get something that we can get, uh, and Randy Hunt's working with us on it. So we've got a lot of people now that have some substance, that have some opportunity to get us some funds, and collectively with a bunch of towns, we should be able to make some progress. That's really kind of what it is. It's kind of a, uh, a quick summary because we're not there yet, but we, we have got the committee, we have got the training coming, and we have the subcommittees ready to start working on this. So I think on the committee you know, we've got the, we've got the police, it's at Carline. We've got the fire chief, Tom Rulo. We've got the senior center, which is Lynn Waterman. We've got the library, Kathy Mahoney, which is really the center of a lot of things happening from a training and education perspective. So we've got a lot of good people. Chris Santos from the school committee. Uh, we've got Hope Schwamm from the tribe. So we've got all the, all the different parts of the town involved. The problem is each one of those parts of the town have their own area of focus. And that we were kind of all sitting in one location and all running in different directions. Excuse me. Now with the Barnesville County helping us, we sit back and listen to them tell us how to do this thing, and we're now we're now more unified, more more grouped together, and we're heading out in the right direction. Twenty-third is the next uh, training, followed by a meeting at five o'clock that night, and I'll send you information about the result of that. So that's kind of where we are. Uh, we're still excited about making progress. We still think it's the right thing to do. We appreciate the fact that the town allowed us to have a committee, and we just want to do something to make it work. Thank you. Great. That's it. You get the update. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Uh, do I have any liaison reports? I have none. I, um, I, I guess most people already are aware, but a school committee, there's a new chair. Don Myers is the new chair of the school committee. Um, and George Schmidt is the new um, vice chair um, and the meeting was um, uncomfortable to say the least um, I'm sure most people have you know seen it heard it you know throughout the it was disappointing um, I don't think I have to say anything more but I'm hoping they get it together and start working together as a committee and um, get it right I'm good I have nothing to offer nothing nope, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn I think we're finished. Oh, we have we old business else? we have uh, yeah, we got a new old business and a new oh business. Idea. I'm sorry I didn't get down to yeah. that one. Uh, approval of appointment uh, uh, well let's do the update on the holiday lights the Mashby Road first Holiday lights, um, the last time I think we had a conversation uh, regarding those, we were going to defer to the uh, Chamber of Commerce, which uh, we started to do for the purposes of moving forward in future years on the premise that they would receive some training from the folks that are currently doing it and putting them up and taking them down. The POPs committee did have some concerns uh, relative to the continuity of the crew that would be putting them up or taking them down. Long story short, they would like DPW to facilitate this. The last time we discussed DPW, there was some concerns relative to the cost incurred. The POPs committee is prepared to uh, donate, I don't want to use the word reimburse, donate uh, to a special events line item or however we designate it. I want to be careful because I want it specifically earmarked for this purpose, so how it's phrased, I want to be careful. But they will donate $10,000 per year for this purpose. Um, I've had a discussion with the DPW director 
and I think that's the way to go at this point. Um, any questions? No, oh, that's a commitment. I didn't sign a contract. <laughs> well, I guess my only concern would be not, you know, it's a one-year commitment. I don't think it's one year. I think they want to see this there every year. Also. But even at that, if it's one year, so at the end of one year, we get to decide whether we what have we the like lights or we find a different way. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable proceeding with it on, you know, on that on this basis, and that if it, if they find themselves not in a position to continue that commitment, then we revisit it. Yeah, right. because, I just don't want to get incrementalized. No, I agree with you because uh, <coughs> I, honestly, if it ever came down to that, I think you could. Uh, Form a committee, a private committee in town, and raise ten thousand dollars like nothing for it because so many of the business and and private individuals love that rotary so much. And what I'd really like to do, to be frank with you, is I know you like actual costs. Let me find out the true actual cost from DPW after doing it for a year, and compare that to the ten thousand dollars, and then report back to you, and then we move forward. We may be in a position where that more than covers our costs. We may be in a position where it's short. If it is, then we could reevaluate. Yeah, it's a, it got to be an open door policy for the first year because mm -hmm. it's so much been so much up in the air. I would hate to see us just give up on the lights. Oh, me too. Can you also look in just what the cost of electricity is. Is that that is that I, a separate meter? That I had, but. What I want to caution you on, although I can't cite that figure off the top of my head, we were paying for that anyway. I understand that. Mm -hmm. that. I mean, it was news to me when this came up last time. But just I just don't want you to think that we just uh, took that cost on. We've no, I understand that. Maintained that cost. I understand. I just like to understand and for the years, full, yep. full cost. for years, that. like we're going back thirty years, we've done it. But we upgraded. it. I, they, I realize, the I realize that, but also. the lights have been I always. think they paid for that yes, they did. upgrade. Yes, they did. I think it's a very nice offer that the box is looking to. I think I thought it was That's amazing. It's more than generous. I thought it was generous, and I thought it was reasonable. Yes, I did too. I did too. To try to keep the lights on and at the same time keep the board happy. Mm -hmm. Right. I think that's. I heard people talking about those lights from, you know, towns away. I, as saying, I, wow, you're the best lights people in making all the trip. of Cape Cod. Yeah. Correct. I heard them talking about Santa down here at the park. <laughs> <laughs> that too. <laughs> you need a motion of some sort? Or? No. It was, it was so. more informative. More okay. um, unless the board directed me not to do it, that's how I'm proceeding. Absolutely, yes. Move forward. All right. Approval for appointment of associate member to full member on the Zoning Board of Appeals, Scott. Goldstein. So moved. Second. Any uh, conversation? Nice. Great guy. All those in yes. favor? Yes. 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 Am I yet? I said yes. Yeah, I know. What? Motion to adjourn? Uh, That's second. Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, all those in favor? Yes. 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 Save my fanning the other. I didn't see that.